you. Last Sunday of Trinity, according to the lectionary, 29th of October, we're looking at the most most important command. Uh, Jesus talking to us from Matthew 22. Um, just some notices quickly for you. Are you excited? I am, I'll tell you. Um, Geraint and Carey, Reverend Geraint, Reverend Carey, we're lining them up to be licensed on the 20th of November. Then they're going to come in, all guns blazing, to swell our leadership team. You may have heard that Sam too uh, is coming. Sam, the uh, ordinant, the trainee vicar, still in Bible school, linked to us for three years, again coming to bolster the team. So much happening so quickly. Uh, keep an eye on social media. Keep in touch with us. Uh, we want you to be part of this journey. Back to today. Let's have a listen to a little bit of Bible and then think about what it says. Uh, Matthew 22. Here we go. When the Pharisees heard how he had besetted the Sadducees, they gathered their forces for an assault. One of their religion scholars spoke for them, posing a question they hoped would show him up. Teacher, which command in God's law is the most important? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commandments are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs on them. As the Pharisees were regrouping, Jesus caught them off balance with his own test question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said, David's son. Jesus replied, well, if the Christ is David's son, how would you explain that David, under inspiration, named Christ his master? God said to my master, Sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now if David calls him master, how can he at the same time be his son? That stumped them. Literalists that they were, and willing to risk losing a face again in one of these public verbal exchanges, they quit asking questions for good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, to start us off thinking this morning, uh, come to Triorchy. Um, in the middle of Triorchy, if you know it, there's a crossroads, uh, which has got traffic lights on each of the four approaches. Very busy. Uh, each road has got high buildings on each side, so you can't see very much either. Um, and the traffic lights uh, failed, um, and they had to stay sort of turned off for a few weeks. Uh, and in that time, you would have expected there to be chaos. But actually, during that time, the traffic flowed really well. Uh, there were no mishaps. And then the lights were fixed. Hurrah! Uh, everything went back to normal. But guess what happened within a few days? Boom! Yeah, car crash. Uh, despite the lights being fixed and working properly. Um, keep that example in mind. Okay, I'll come back to it. To the Bible reading. Uh, Jesus is being asked questions by the Pharisees and uh, their cronies, and they're trying to trap him and trick him. They're not interested in what he says. They want to get rid of him. Um, this time, a lawyer asks a question about the law. Now, by way of recap, when God led his people out of Egypt and into the wilderness uh, with Moses, there were ten rules to live by. Okay, uh, Anybody know what they are in order? I'll put them on the screen, it's all right. Uh, here we are in Exodus 20. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Right? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, 
but in the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And on it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor daughter, nor your male or female slave, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. And you shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. There's a reason these ten come like this. The first three are about putting God first. Okay, Get it all in context. The fourth one then, have a day off. Okay, uh, The fifth, never forget where you've come from. Yeah, Honouring father and mother. And six to ten, they're all about making sure that the world that we live in is a safe place. Ten commandments, they were given by God. 1,500, 1,000 BC, that's the kind of time. Um, so, you know, thousands of years ago. As rules to live by, yeah? Uh, but how many rules have those ten increased to by the time uh, Pharisees and Jesus are having their conversation? Uh, yes, 613. So God says, here's ten things to keep in mind. And the Pharisees have decided that wasn't enough, 613. So when Jesus gets asked what is the most important, right? Uh, he paraphrases the ten even. You should love the Lord your God with everything you are. And then he gives the second. You should love every other human as you do yourself. And he finishes up by saying, do you know, that's all. That is all you need to know. Not 613, not even 10, but two or one in two halves, if you like. So what's that got to do with Triopi? Okay. Well, in Triorki, people navigated by looking at the colours of the traffic lights. Okay. You get to the junction, you look at the lights, and you decide what to do. Now, when the lights were broken, okay, uh, you had to look around and see the other drivers. And when you see the other drivers and you communicate, everything works well. When the lights were fixed, didn't have to look at your drivers anymore. Just look at the lights. Um, and people started jumping lights and accidents happened, yeah? You uh, need to focus on people okay even though the lights are there that's what makes triorki work right and what jesus does is he takes all that's gone before okay and summarizes it into two rules two focuses two focuses okay love god love people this is what he says yeah? <clears throat> look for god remember god think about god consider god in your decisions Give time to God. Focus on God. Okay? And then this is what else he says. Look for people. Remember people. Think about people. Consider people in your decisions. Give time to people. Focus on people around you. Yeah? Focus. Focuses. Um, let me summarise what I've just said. And you've got the rest of your life then to sort of work it out. Yeah? Um, don't look at the lights alone. Yeah? Uh, don't look at the rules alone. But look at the creator of all and look at your fellow pilgrims. Okay? Uh, you don't have to, but there's much less chance of a bump uh, if you do. Yeah? If you do. Focus on God, focus on people. Everything else just falls into place. Then, yeah? uh, a couple of questions for you if you want to take that home with you if you like and do send your answers in or have a chat lovely to talk to you about what you think uh number one ever been to triorki do you know what i'm on about with the old uh, junction yeah i used to practice driving there before my driving test oh uh, number two do you know the ten commandments did you realize they all come in a particular reason um, have you ever nosed at them before God, have got, they're really good number three can you see how jesus took the essence of the ten yeah just ignore the 613 can you see you took the essence of the ten to
to make two. Yeah? Uh, can you say that? Uh, and number four, any commandments you struggle with, okay? Anything you struggle with? It might suggest there's something, a bit of unresolved sin or a habit or something that you're struggling with. Are there any commandments? You know, when I just went through them, or if you look back at them, they go, hmm, that's a tricky one. Spend some time with it, okay? Spend some time with it. Uh, song, bolt it on at the end. What could we choose? There's so many. Uh, but we're talking about focus uh, and the way that we need to look at things. So let's sing about Be Thou My Vision. Okay, Be Thou My Vision. Uh, we'll sing that one. Uh, for now, I need to leave you with a prayer. So hands together, close your eyes. Let's pray our way out uh, of this podcast. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for the way that Jesus took the Ten Commandments and thinned them down to two simple rules to live by. Help us to love you and love everybody we share the planet with. Amen. Amen. Good to spend time with you. Uh, I shall leave you now and uh, there will be more podcasts coming along, uh, whether that be Mark or Chris or Glenda or in time, Kerry and Geraint. Who knows? Isn't it good to have lots of people about? Keep safe, everybody. See you soon.
Oh Lord of my heart. 